We're here today at Imperial College London for exclusive access to the new research centre that's been opened to counter IED blast trauma. So the Royal British Legion Centre for Blast Injury Studies here at Imperial College London has been funded by the Legion and by Imperial College to look at the effect of blast injuries on the human body. The reason why we want to do this now is because so many people who previously were um, dying as a result of these kinds of injuries are now surviving. That's as a result of um, medical technology, uh, logistics, significant improvements over the past few years. So the good news is that. The bad news is, of course, that lots of people are now maimed in a way that uh, we previously haven't seen, and they're surviving. So we need to do something about it. So part of the story is really about understanding those injuries better, because there are some physical responses that we haven't seen before, and that medical science hasn't seen before, and there are also some biological responses that we've never seen before. And so there's a scientific and a medical opportunity to do something which has never been done before. By mitigation, we mean probably not stopping what happens, absolutely, but maybe deflect the injury or the biological response to something that is more amenable to repair or to recovery. So for example, there are certain types of musculoskeletal injuries, so injuries to the bones and, and joints, that cause long-term disability, multiple operations and reoperations, and we know that the end effect will be something severe like a, a, an amputation a couple of years down the line. But we also know that certain other injuries that might look more severe when they first happen actually are amenable to repair. And so that knowledge in and of itself and the tools that we're developing here in the centre will allow us to creatively explore ways of deflecting the blast, the encroachment of the vehicle, whatever it may be, the injury, to an area that's more amenable to reconstruction. We think that's possible and that's the kind of thing we're working on. So this centre has been spawned out of a research group called Imperial Blast that has been funded by lots of different people previously, um, veterans charities, DSTL, government funding agencies. And that's allowed us to get to this stage where we're able to look at um, the vehicle deformation and the effect on the body and those types of injuries. But the centre has been funded to extend that reach to not just look at musculoskeletal injuries, for example, but to look at other injuries, so brain, nerves, urogenital system, lung, for example. These are all injuries that happen in blast and which we're now able, through the funding, to start looking at as well. So there's some experimental capacity we need to develop, and some of that is to do with simulating not just the enclosed blast environment or the solid blast environment, which this big machine next to me um, simulates, but to also look at the free field blast. So this is the effect of a, a shock wave on the human body and the biological and physical response. And so we're developing equipment to do that, and you can see some of that that's already up and running now um, here today just behind you. So there are some very significantly different scientific and technical questions associated with these, but they're all due to the same insult. They're all due to a bomb, an IED, a mine. So the funding model for the centre is, is this seed funding from the Royal British Legion, but we do expect to be doing far more research than that £5 million, pounds, um, plus the imperial contribution, which is £3 million on top of that. We expect to be doing quite a lot more research than, than that money would buy us. And that comes from a number of different sources and has already previously come from a number of different sources. So DSTL, for example, have funded a lot of the research prior to this. In fact, the design of this equipment was funded partially through that, but also through other veterans' charities like SAFRA and ABF. Um, and they've allowed us to get to this stage. Now, where we go from here on is very interesting. So there probably is commercial application of some of our ideas and some of our technologies. And so we're obviously developing a strategy to look at how we interact with industry. Uh, vehicle manufacturers, boot manufacturers for example, and it's very public that we're doing quite a lot of work on the boots for example to deflect blast. Um, but there are some other things that we can do. For example, the therapeutic interventions might suggest that we can look at uh, pharmacology for example and pharma pharmaceutical companies. So we're very keen to develop those but we're also seriously investigating the science and the technology now so that we have something to offer as well. So if you understand the effect of a severe physical insult is on the human body, the physical effect but also the biological effect, then you can start looking at how changing that insult will change the effect. And so I think the first things that will come out of this type of research, and that are already coming out in fact, are recommendations 
effectively engineering design specifications as to the maximum type of insult that the human body could receive and then survive or that the biological effect will be reduced, for example. So although we're not currently looking at designing the armour ourselves, what we're actually doing is assisting in the future design of these by saying these are the parameters you need to work within, for example. So something that somebody might ask us is how unique is this, how different are we, what can we do that nobody else can do? And it's very easy to answer that. Nobody can do the kinds of experiments currently that we're able to do. So for example, the rig that I have behind me, or next to me here, is able to simulate this physical insult in a way that nobody is able to do. Why is this important? Well, the first thing is that we are able to replicate the injuries that are seen in the battlefield. And other work that's going on, using um, human specimens, perhaps using surrogates, have not yet shown the types of injuries that we have been seeing through the clinical involvement of military personnel in the centre. Um, and so I think that's probably a key selling point and a, a unique aspect of the research. Another unique aspect is the fact that military personnel are embedded here. So we are involved in the analysis, the understanding of clinical data and what happens after a period of time after these types of injuries. Again, this is data that no one else seems to be able to access or seems to be able to work with or use. And it's very important to us that the military strongly support us, and they do. So the Surgeon General um, has for the past few years supported this group by embedding military personnel with us, and that is continuing. We currently have four um, orthopaedic surgeons who are from the military, from the armed forces in general in fact, and who are doing their higher degrees in research here, but also contributing to the wider research activity. This large lump of metal is Anubis, which, is, which simulates a, an explosion underneath the vehicle and how the vehicle deforms onto the human body. So in the middle here, we have a very heavy disc that weighs about 45 kilos. And through a pressure vessel underneath, where we um, increase the pressure, and then at a certain load, at a certain pressure, the plate will be released to accelerate upwards. And in a couple of milliseconds, so up to about this height, it will be at maximum velocity, which we can vary. We can vary up to about 25 meters a second. Um, although actually to simulate the kind of, to replicate the kind of injuries that we see in the human body, currently from the battlefield, we probably only need about nine meters a second, which is what we've been doing recently. So this shoots up and then these braking bars, and there are four sets of these all the way around, these braking bars then stop it from, from uh, going through the ceiling. And then we mount, um, we mount the tissues, so we use human tissues um, that have been donated for medical research um, and approved by an ethics committee. We position them perhaps in a seated position and the foot sits on the plate inside here. Um, we can also simulate the standing position and anything in between. Um, and then we also have been using crash test dummies or surrogates they call these, um, and in fact the word surrogate is, is a useful one to use because we also have computational surrogates and this machine is able to allow us to verify our computer models that can simulate the same kind of insult on the human body.